We are hey, live. We are Woo! live. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to Lost in the Groove. Uh, my name is Dave. I'm your host. Today we have an interview with Sherry Gamble. Um, we're going to go back to what we were just talking about. So can you, um, what, were you just, uh, we, what were you just saying? Uh, what we were just saying oh, before. Um, well, we were talking about how, how, um, how cities and, and, and communities within America can create their own, they're really their only sole country. So there's, You were saying Arlington in 1986. What exactly yeah. happened there? Arlington, 1986. That was a whole other subculture of, of, of uh, people that, uh, that were quite, quite different in a lot of ways. Very super Southern Baptist religious. I used to go to church like three times a week. Oh boy. And most of it was because of community. Right. You know, and I remember every spring they had this kickoff this celebration, you know, it's the fellowship. So they had this thing called the Jello Pudding Flop. A Jello Pudding Flop. Yes. Yes. It was about, they basically dug a pit in the ground. Okay. And then filled it with thick plastic tarp, and and then filled it with like gallons upon gal, like tubs, like probably two hundred gallons of chocolate jelly pudding. And they had a competition to see who could dive the best in the vat of chocolate jelly pudding. Um, from and the way I'm hearing I, the story, these people had a lot of free time, or um, I don't know. Yeah, it was quite, and it was a big church too. Wow, yeah. like like they're not like mega church, but like it's pre mega church. Pre mega. Oh, okay. Like Maybe. we're talking about like over a thousand, like over a thousand people. Uh, less. It was sorry. It was. I guess in terms of churches being corporation, it was a mini like corporation. I see. You know, oh. it was it would if they would have done a, a remodeling project, then it would have gotten bigger. But any anyway, back to yeah. that of chocolate jello pudding. Oh yeah, yeah. I want to get back. <laughs> I want to get back to that of <laughs> jello, jello. Yeah. God. So, we would have a barbecue, and then as part of the activities, we had a jello pudding flop. And you ran, and then you did some crazy dive into this pool of chocolate jello pudding. I wonder, I wonder about the, 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 the cleaning crew afterwards that have to come oh. and like. Well, that was quite interesting too, because I was the only female on the first. The first year was all dudes, you know, and I was like, screw this, I'm going to do it too. So I did it. Right. Okay. And then, yeah. And the second year, though, I got all the girls to do it with me as well. So they dove into the, the vat of chocolate pudding. Well, interestingly enough, they had to get hosed down after they flopped in the pudding by no other than the white church older men. That were helping facilitate and organize the event. So, but this is, this is <laughs> like this is like one of those like childhood stories. You like you go into Barnes and Noble. This is what I'm picturing right now. You go to Barnes and Nobles, okay? <laughs> you walk into the door and there's like that big carousel like right in the front. You have like that book that like, and it's just childhood, church, yes. belly flop, Jello. That's it. Yeah. That's all you need on the cover. That's all you need. Bestseller. Number one bestseller. Yeah. I got a lot of people to go to the, you know, be, you know become faith Christian. 
Hey, Sorry. listen, listen, listen. When when the Jello calls, man. When when the Jello calls, you gotta you you gotta be <laughs> you gotta be going. <laughs> yeah, that was a control sort of uh, anthropological experience that I had growing up which unplanned like that's what your podcast is all about right lost in the group I never thought that when I came on today I would end up talking to you about this weird moment in my you know past it happened it, it happens it you know it, it's it's kind of strange because we as human beings kind of forget that when we converse with one another and we have conversations uh we don't tend to need direction we just you know, sometimes we, we talk and then, you know, we're thinking and talking at the same time. Uh, yeah. And, you know, kind of interesting, you, you start to learn new things because you're asking different things and you're kind of going into, I like to call it the nitty gritty, you know, maybe because I'm Jewish, we got to go into every little crevice. But when you go into the nitty, when you go into the nitty gritty and you go to little corners, you kind of learn interesting things that you didn't know. For example, I never knew that they make a vat at this, like, white large church where you just jump in and it's just fucking chocolate pudding like holy shit this sounds so cool <laughs> it was i mean i like remember mm. the time i did it i just remember like because everyone would try to do a flip or you know it was a lot of machismo uh but i don't know what i did i i'm glad i didn't break it oh my god because it was really slippery Oof. Yeah, I mean it's pudding. Yeah. Pudding is 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 made to be slippery, my darling. It's in design, gelatin. Uh, let me ask you, so let me ask you something. Besides, I mean, you seem like a person that's got all these wild adventures and, and stories. And what I'm curious is like, we all as kids have had like this dream of like what we want to be when we want to grow up. And I feel like there's a point in our lives when we realize that we're artistic and we want to use that like and harness that and kind of like perfect our crafts. When do you like what kind of if you could put an age on it, like when what period in your life did you start feeling that way? <sighs> That's a really good question. And I love the way that you framed it. You know, I love I, I really like the way that you framed it. Um. I think the first moment was sort of out of uh, a response to just getting out of the hospital from asthma. So I, I just got out of the hospital, you know, when I was like five years old or something like that, because I struggled with asthma when I was a kid. So I get oh, yeah. home, I go out, the first thing I do is I go outside in the backyard, you know, and I just start getting some sticks. Like I, I just got some sticks together and just wanted to just collect stuff outside. And then I brought it back inside my room. And I think my room was like this imagination station. Like that was my first little, you know, uh, dwelling that I had created, you know. And so I, I bring everything back in there and just take some notebook paper. I ended up making this windmill out of the sticks and the notebook paper and the glue, you know. And uh, I go out in my yard and I put it together. And my parents are like, where did you come up with that idea? And I was like, I don't know. I, I just, you know, you just start piecing things together. It's almost like alchemy. You know? It's really crazy. You just take little scraps and you make something out of it. Like, yeah. most people would be like, oh, that's a junk. But no, you were like, hmm, notebook. Paper, scraps, mm, glue, windmill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that, you know, it isn't crazy how we can just piece together these, you know? Yeah, no, ideas. I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I mean, I, it's kind of weird because an artist's brain is, you're going to need a, a lot more than just a seatbelt and earbags, okay? To tell you that right now, the, <laughs> but the 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 idea of creation, like for example, for me, I actually am an artist. Like I, you know, I play guitar. Yeah, I, I actually like draw. And uh, one of like things for me for inspiration is is that I think up of an idea, 
And then I think of like the different materials and the kind of like the textures and kind of how things are. Um, it's weird because like people are like, what is wrong with you? It's just a stupid texture. Like, bro, it's 40. It's like five dollars cheaper to buy the other shit. I'm like, no, I want that. That's better. You know, it's like it's being able to like that's the thing that I was trying to get out to is like you reach that point of like, OK, I do things differently than other people. Yes. Yeah. And then you have teachers, though, as you either that that either think that you're really, you know, off, you know, the rails, like just, you know, awkward, strange learning disability. I actually had like one teacher, you know, in front of other students. Right. And I'm like, I it was like so embarrassing because I was actually in my early 40s and or wait late 30s um and I was going back to school for interior design because I got laid off at Microsoft thankfully big round of layoffs wait a minute wait, wait wait a minute was this the mid 2000s or was this was the early 2000s yeah way early like yeah like I started Oh, so you were around my, my sis because my sister actually she worked as um she worked with Bear Stearns. And then okay. Bear Stearns they closed and then she switched over to IDT. Yeah. This is you know what I'm talking. This is like early two thousand this is early yeah. um but yeah, like I remember her telling me like there was that period where they were just laying people off, like people were coming and going, businesses were closing, other ones were buying them out. It was yeah, was I was four years though for the last year, but I hung on because of the money. Oh, I see. But I was still plastering, and like I was sort of, I had my side hustle. I think I, you, you know, you've mentioned that about the importance of the of the side hustle, and that, that you know, like it's hard to, you know, break, break, you know, break free from that. So, but yeah, so sort of back to what we're, you know, talking about yeah. being. You know, I knew that when I was working there, that I was not there. I, I had to move on at some point. This was this thing was calling me over here. So, yeah. Yeah, I know that feeling. It's um, it's strange because we live in a we, we live in a society right now where if you are a person that is artistic or creative. And being able to to financially support yourself and being able to have a family and have a home is extremely difficult because the way that society has been structured is you go to college to work for someone. There is no structure of you working for yourself. The way, you know, my father's an immigrant, the way that many immigrants came to this country throughout the 20th century, that's what they did. They came here and they made a business. What do you think there's so many fucking pizza places in, in, in New York? because Italians came and I'm dead serious and they opened up bakeries and pizza shops and that's how they were able to support their families. But that type of mentality is gone. Now it's you work for someone, you get a paycheck, you go home. Yeah. Doesn't cut it. Yeah. Yeah. And and hand workers get paid less than knowledge based workers, you know, and and, you know, where are like think about all those you know, craftsmen that came and started building, you know, spaces here. And and all of that, you know, all of that just, it's, it's a profession. And uh, it's just really interesting, like, like, white, you know, knowledge workers versus hand, hand workers and sort of how the hand workers really have to hustle more. Physically, like I can't do my job unless I am able to climb up scaffold. Yeah, otherwise you can't you know? work. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So I found a way to um, have a profession in the creative art through construction. 
and through, you know, plastering walls, doing big fireplaces and things like that. So I love the fine art. You know, that's the meat and potatoes of something, though. When you're in your studio and you're, again, making, you know, making matter out of all of these materials and really cool things come up. That's the good part. Then there's the part of, okay, well, what are you going to do for a profession? I know. And it, it's it's strange, because, like, you know, kind of the benefit also is um, social media. You know, I this is crazy. I recently saw this uh, and I actually reached out. Many homeless people now, they're on social media. They have social media accounts. And I, I did not know this was a thing. And they basically post um, like their cash app that you can send them donations. And oh, they, wow. yeah, and like they kind of like take you on a tour. Like one person I reached out, I could send you over if if, info, if you're interested. Um, he travels by like these cargo trains throughout the United States, and he's been to all of these different states. And I'm like, crafty, okay, very crafty in a way of like using the resources to your benefits. Like the yeah. government's giving you a free smartphone, so use it to your advantage. Make a living from it. If you're yeah. homeless and you can't get yourself out of it, you got a free device here. See? It's like, like in tarot. Actually, I have my tarot card. Ooh. But my favorite card is the magician. And so, Ooh. basically, what is happening here is he has all these materials and tools on the table, and it's up to him to make matter. And to, to turn lead into gold. You an know? impossible so, and an impossible feat. It is sometimes. But sometimes it's possible. Is it possible? If you want it to be. Yeah. It's it's sort of all about you know mindset. Sometimes those those materials and those tools and objects come at you at such a high rate. It's like you could have like five different ideas going all at the same time and you forget to eat and that's part of being in a flow state if you will flow states can be a little maddening <laughs> so you have to be in it and then you have to recover <laughs> it's like it's kind of like shock therapy but without the shock yes yeah yeah and you have something to show for it like i've been casting these like really cool tiles um Th and those black. are really cool yeah. And you know what I did here? I just took a block of clay and I cut, I used a, a rough rope, cut through the clay, and then did some processes to cast it in a glass. So it's literally just one swipe through a piece of clay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing a lot of these. And I have a show coming up in April. So I'm kind of excited about it. They're really nice. Like I, okay. So, um, I, I will say this. One of my, uh, one of my dreams is, uh, I, I would love to have a home. Unfortunately, it's way too expensive. So very, very, very far down the line. But when I do have a home, like I, I want it to be very seventies. The thing is I really want to have like with my kitchen, I want to have it very like organic and very like, like naturistic, you know, like, I don't know, like a skyline on the top of the, of the kitchen like you know huge skyline so just light pours down have plants everywhere and like that kind of tile you know like on the walls um yeah. i i this yeah. is the problem like you show me this and this is what i'm thinking about like okay green cabinets you could put like gold knobs and then they have like little petals and then you could like it's just it just keeps on going i can't stop I it I love it. I mean, who would have thought you being in Florida and me being in Washington State, we could kind of bounce, you know, ideas off of, of other state, create new ones. I must say in your house, though, I, I, I also smell like an earthy smell in there, too. Like 100%. Yes. Maybe like cedar. Lavender. Is that smell? Oh, lavender. Exactly. Yeah. I think smell is really important. Yes, 100%. You know, yeah, 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 but like, for example, <clears throat> kind of the 
that was interesting and in, in, um with that tile is it kind of has like the the ripple of wood you ever look at the uh you know if when a tree trunk is cut down if you look at the inside of of a tree you can see all these different rings and they're kind of like little ripples yeah. and what yeah 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 right there yeah exactly like those kind of like ripples and what that represents for a tree it represents mm -hmm. the years of its life that's how yeah. you know how old a tree is by the lines yeah. oh oh i hadn't really thought about it in that way before. that's what i was told I, I i can fact check this let me let me fact check this hold on no it's true no the tree ring theory is definitely true um when i was sort of looking at these pieces I hadn't really put correlated the rings of a tree with the rings represented here. Oh my god. All right. So. Okay. Uh it is the rings of the tree. All right. I just yeah. wanted to fact I just wanted to fact check. Yeah. Clear. Ah. Yeah. We're not in yeah. trouble. Phew. Well drink it and, and it can happen, you know? Like it's um, you know, th again, this is a fascinating thing about nature. And um <clears throat> This is one thing that I loved about, and this is why I brought you on, is incorporating nature. Okay, I'm like, I'll be honest, I've noticed a little bit of nature elements in some of the posts, and I was like, oh. and like, even I noticed like with the way that you plaster, you know, like different shapes, you know, the, the lines, and I don't know, like, I love when, I love when architecture and the way that like, you know, a home kind of incorporates nature oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. like i'm actually in the process my husband and i were in the process of selling our house that we've lived in for over 22 years um and that's sort of on east of seattle i'm west now but that that property though it's the most beautiful hunk of of privacy that you can ever you know have and um being able to create out there was a really beautiful thing. I ended up craving community after all. I love nature, but I also like to, you know, community. That's why you I can bring, it. you can balance the two out. People forget that, like, you don't have to be a nomad living in the middle, uh, in the middle of the, you know. Oh, that's fun. It is fun, <laughs> but like, you can still be with a community. Like, I know, um, um, I know of there are communities out like for example in california like there's like actual like group they live on a property and they all like have homes so it's like a communion but like it's they're like a registered city so you know they have to travel a little bit to get stuff but that's kind of a good option you know like you're in the middle of nowhere but you're not alone so and if somebody robs you you got 49 people you got to check. So, I mean. True. Yes. Very true. Very true. Well, I have to tell you, when you said the word nomad, my, like, my, my antlers perked right up because I have come to the realization that, in the reality, that I love living everywhere. I, 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 I can't live just in one place. I am constantly moving. Same. I, I have to move for my job, you know? I mean, I got a house over here, a house over there. Like, I'm all over the place. So, you know, I'm trying to get better at just coming to accept that, that, you know, need and that desire to want to go commune with nature directly. And, you know, see it's tides go it's hard to find the balance. It is. It is because then you're and I and I love to go alone. You know, I really like my solitude a lot. Um, I I don't I don't see how people can function by constantly being around another person for twenty four hours a day. I'm no, that, that in my yeah. life. Like, Got to have my own time right. space. Yeah. 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 So easy to dissolve yourself around someone. I well, because to, to your point, as much as we humans need connection from others at the same yeah. time, like I said before, you need balance. It's like yeah. there, there's some fundamentals that people forget that, like, for you to be a functional adult, 
or a functional individual, you need to have balance. If you don't have balance, you cannot, you know, like balance is like accepting what your job is, you know, understanding your responsibilities, understanding what you have control of and what you don't have control of and working with those things. Because again, if you try, I'm telling you, like I've learned this the hard way and I haven't lived very long in my life. When you fight, it never goes well. I like I I I mean that it never goes well, never. Oh, so true, so true. Cheers. Cheers to you too. It's Ooh. almost time to have a beer, but not quite. Um, you're right about that. I and I I have I have a temper. You know, I can have a temper and I uh, impulse. You know, it never. It might feel good at the time, but it never goes well. Great. So find that find that balance. And uh, so, but yeah, you said the word nomad. I was like, huh. <laughs> well, for for me, for for me, like I um I don't travel as much as I used to. But um, I've been around like I, I was out of the country for a few years. I came back. I lived in California and then moved back to New York. And then I, I lived in Jersey. And then I, I also I live out here. I, I've been. I've been around. I've, I've lived in quite a few places. And like this is like the first like this is like my first like. Home, like I've you know, I've, I've been here for a year, so yeah. I've left my stench enough in this place that it's going to take them a while to get it out. <laughs> but uh yeah well that's 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 really cool because it's my my studio like i finally bought my own space away from my house to you know shape and mold and do whatever i want to in you know so i have two glass kilns out here that's where i'm firing that new work that i showed you um and the interesting thing is, is that uh, in about, uh, you know, the early this evening, I'm going to become a landlord. So I'm going to be renting part of the space out to someone who's working at the shipyard down the, down the road. He's in the Navy and he's short-term housing. So it could be a way for, you know, to help support someone else's goals and make a little bit of income on my own and share the space, you know? I'm happy to share this space with someone who definitely needs it, you know, because it's a really cool place. So if you're ever out this way, you have your own artistic Airbnb right here. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. But this is my manifestation come true. So, uh, you know, I'm leasing it out to her for 60 days and she's, part you know she stays here and i work here and you know make messes in the back i call it aggregate alley back there <laughs> i love that then i just had tons of gravel put out there so i can go out there and throw plaster all day and it's not going to stain <laughs> so aggregate mm. alley do you want to uh, the, what? Go ahead. No, I was going to tell you, I'm going to pull up some of you. I actually have your work here. If you want, we can show this to the um, audience. But yes, this is our producer. Her name is yes. Twix. Twix. Yes. Oh, what a cutie. Yes, she is. And uh, sh she likes to be very noisy. <laughs> very noisy. All right. Let me oh. um let me yeah. pull this up. All right. Because we've been talking about we've been talking about your work, and then it's like no one can see. All right, for all of you people that are on YouTube, here we go. So this is ooh. Oh, oh wow, that was my last project I did. Yes, yes, yes. So you did. Let me ask you something. You did this whole piece. Yes. This. Oh my god. Yeah. You um, plaster I that entire thing. So the substrate, the, the coating actually was already plastered. But what I did is I applied I two layers of black limestone paint to the surface. And then I waxed it to make it kind of shine. 
a, a little bit. Yeah, it kind of so, looks like metal. Yeah, exactly. My client kind of wanted a gunmetal look. And so, yeah, that, that was the darkest uh, wall that I've ever done for someone. It was really therapeutic making black X's on the wall. I have to tell you. You know what would be you really beautiful on this? You know what be really yeah. beautiful? If um in the back there was like a a, a metal bar you know, like gold, like maybe like bronze metal pieces that create like a piece. It'd be really cool is if like it was able to like either hang like a light or something to kind of like throw that like industrial like gun and it would go great with the the. I, I'm so I'm just throwing out idea. This is just me. Oh my God. Well, this particular client uh, liked to change his mind a lot on the project which is ended up taking him way longer than he planned and way oh more money than he planned. So I was really, really careful with him. Grant, sorry, I should, probably shouldn't say his name, but I won't say his last name, whatever. You know, hey, Randy, I'm going to wax this wall today. Are you sure you don't want me to do anything different? No, good. So I, I handled him right, but I feel sorry for the general contractor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, what's the next yeah, one? That's the darkest yeah, that's yeah. The, that's this the is, block. yeah, the, yeah, this one is actually like a clearer picture. Um, mm -hmm. ooh, it. that looks yeah. like from a tree. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that cool? And that's glass. It, it, yeah, it is glass. And you know, the thing that I'm loving so much about this new work is that I started out Clay is the original material that I sculpted it in. And so to, to be able to have it transform from that clay sculpture and cast that into a new material, glass, it's so cool to be able to hop from one material to the other. Yeah, it is. And it's, <clears throat> it's really interesting because sometimes when you take the simplest of, of materials. Yeah. It's like, you know, nothing has to be fancy. Like sometimes some like I'm no I'm no no person that's in as of this. I love watching those reels of people that make clay pots. Um and they're just simple little pots, you know, like little um little bowls and there's nothing anything fancy about them. It's just but the way that they're molding it, the way that they're shaping it. I love that. I can watch those the whole day and they're, they're so therapeutic and kind of yes. inspirational. Yes. Yeah. So what's your favorite YouTube uh, indulgence then to watch? It, it, would it be clay hand sculpting? Um, so my indulgence for content is other podcasters. Wonderful. I love listening to other podcasters, comedians. I love comics um music um clay and pottery yes. um science i'm not I, i'm not like one of those you know like i like more educational things sometimes i like something a little bit more silly but i usually like things that have more of a purpose you know oh my god that's like a, that's a one of my latest works too Oh, uh, that was that was that's so cool that you brought up this image because it's beautiful. Last week was sort of I was trying to finish up, you know, some new work, and I was sort of in this very experimental phase with lime paint and spackling compound. <laughs> and oh being my, able wait, wait, wait! So that spackle? Yes, that spackling. Compound. Oh my. Oh, that's fucking what? wild. Yeah, that's okay, we're what? zooming in. We're zooming in. Pe people, we're zooming in. I got to see this. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, okay. oh. oh, that's fucking bitching. <laughs> I like that. All right. Uh, yeah. So, and I made a bunch of, you know, other pieces to go along with it. But there, I mean, I, I, I. I cannot reproduce that. If I tried to sit there and draw that, I've never, I'm a horrible drawer. But 
sometimes you start to see stuff come out. And then you want to start following and chasing. And people, for yeah. pe people forget that an artist doesn't mean somebody that holds a brush and a pen. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I love that one. And for that one, I actually on the last set of experiments, because I was doing so many experiments last week. So one of the last materials I used to finish up the series was resin. Um, and so that one has changed a little bit. I have it in the, the other room. I could, I could go get it, but I'd have to leave my seat. Um, but I, I poured resin on top of that and it looks very, very cool too, but that looks good too. So the problem with making original art is once you change it, <laughs> but yeah, I, I love that one a lot. And you, uh, you ready for the next one? Yeah, sure. Ooh, see, that was what I was talking about. And that was, I was telling you, you see how the, see how the line See how the when you plaster and you see how the that piece is coming out, it's not like a square. It kind of has like that like round shape to it. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm talking. That's what I'm talking about. Is like I like I like that. You know, it's like there, you know, there's different angles. There's up line, straight, curve, rounded. Yeah. That one was really interesting because that's actually my house. Um, that really, I'm just about to put on the market, yeah, in Redmond. But I that was my original Earth House. So, my company name is Earth House Studio. So, this house is my original sanctuary laboratory for plaster. Um, and so what I've had to do though is go back over some of those walls with hot mud or more plaster and just blank everything out, which has really broken my heart in a lot of ways. But I've also found other ways to really bring a lot of catharsis and closure on being that. So but, um, I, I didn't mention this before, and I think it's important. important. The, um, the importance of plaster over walls uh, yeah. helps with smoothness, and mm -hmm. it also helps with texture. So... Your line, like the walls will look yeah. cleaner. Um, if you ever, for example, a uh, great example for plaster would be wallpaper. Okay. If you have a house and you want to have wallpaper and you want to use a wallpaper that is um, removable, you know, the ones that are easy, they go on and off. If the wall is like slightly textured in any way, shape, or form, you're going to see it. I don't care what the pictures online will tell you, I've seen it in person. Really? Yeah, you can immediately you can see that there's it's it's lumpy like there's bubbles yeah. there's cuts it it doesn't look it looks fine further back that's the thing though it's like the extra step you know like you're going the extra step why well because it's better oh my it god yes it looks better I, I hate orange peel it is architectural eczema get rid of it. Goosebumps on the walls go. And I had I got kind of gotten a little, you know, we didn't we didn't we didn't fight, but a discussion, a healthy discussion with my realtor because she wanted me to go orange peel everything. And I was like, no, we are doing I will I will skim coat over the goosebump walls. And so I did, and it took me it took me a couple weeks of really hard because I was also working on that black fireplace project while I was doing this during oh my, my God. it was crazy. <laughs> but I did it. Mm. You know, I love a skim coated wall. Oh my God, that's how all walls should be. Like, what is up with this? Oh well, orange peel is the industry standard. I, I could you got me going. <laughs> Listen, you know, I like we're gonna bang through we, we're gonna get through each of these because no, they're they're good. beautiful. Let's and uh so yeah. this one this one immediately, okay. I'm getting birch tree straight up. I'm getting birch tree, I'm getting 
old wood. Mm. But I'm definitely getting birch. I don't know why. I'm just getting birch tree vibes. Oh, that's very, that's really interesting because, I mean, it kind of could be a topography of like tree textures. And I hadn't really even thought of that way. But I love the fact that you see that. You emulate a lot of, you realize that a lot of your art emulates trees. I did, I never, yeah, wow, you're blowing my mind. I love this. So <laughs> I think it's kind of interesting. I mean, it's beautiful. Um, see, like, here's a question for you. The biggest problem people have with abstract art is people call it lazy art because, again, it's not done with pen and paper, you know, pen and yeah. whatever. Um, but the thing about abstract art is and I'm, I'm talking about people that actually do abstract art. I'm not talking about five minute crafts, craps or crafts, whatever the fucking name is. And they're <laughs> who shit with the rubber band and the glue and the no, 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 no. I'm talking about people that are like. Um, for example, swing wire, like people taking like nails and digging holes in and like having one part that's glossed, the other parts are just experimenting. Yeah. I'm curious, how did you make this piece? So that is also a new piece. That that the creature piece in this were made during the same span of time, which was like 10 days ago, five days ago. Oof. It's super Oof. fresh. This is super fresh work. Um, anyway, so so what I did is I actually made that using hot mud, sheetrock mud, the same mud that I was using when I was troweling. You know, your previous picture with my hand on the trowel. That's Amazing. the same kind of, of mud that I used on these pieces. Because I had just had extra mud, so I would start spreading them out on canvas. And then I did use a little puff paint. <laughs> I kind of like got some puff paint and I just started making like, you know, jagged lines and and then sort of knocked some of those down a little bit. But basically hot mud and lime paint. So the lime paint was extra from the black fireplace project. And then I had a few other colors as well. So that's literally gypsum plaster and lime paint. We, you know, it's interesting because like the biggest talk right now is like with chat GPT and with artificial intelligence and being able oh, to yeah. create different art. The thing is, is like with abstract art, even though it can create the style of an artist. It, it, OK, like we're able to do this right now, like I'm able to zoom it like I'm not. I don't know how good the zoom quality is, but. Um, this is really good quality. Like if you zoom in like this in an artificial piece, I can pull one up to sh give an example. Um, you don't get this type of quality. The the way that the lines are put into this, the way that the paint is splattered. You don't get that with. AI, you know what I'm saying? It's like, again, it's. Going back to the idea of. This is a form of art that is a self of expression of oneself, not knowing right. where you're going to start and you end up with a result. Exactly. Wow. Very well said. Very well said. And, and AI will never help you bring out that inner cave person that you still are. That impulsive sort of mark maker, you know, mm -hmm. and it's, action that you're able to channel so much creative energy and so much energy that you know you end up putting all your impulses into the piece of art instead of maybe one too many beers or whatever i mean you know? i want I, I mean i want one one too many beers you know, know. it's, it's yeah. saturday night you know like <laughs> But then I but then I will wake up groggy tomorrow morning and I won't be able to have my head in the game. And that's the thing about drinking too much uh, all the time. So I really, you know, I do like to party and drink, you know, and 
but I like to I like to save my mojo for my work as mm. you know as I can. But it's it's that part though that's maddening as well. Like when you look at that piece, you're really seeing what's inside of my mind. You know, with with that sort of head, sort of your because your head spins when you're trying to pull different things together and experiment. It's yeah, it's fun. It's a it's a trippy dippy experience. It is. It is. I love it. <laughs> oh, uh, well, oh, that's so cool that you brought up those specific images because well, I mean, you sent you sent them to me, and I was. I was really yeah. happy. Um, I really, really happy you did because this is. The, I, I'm gonna say this, and like to anybody that's listening, one of the things that happens sometimes is like I'll, I'll send out an email to artists that are coming on, to like bring over, like send over pieces. And you know, like things happen, and it doesn't like always. But you actually, I actually had stuff that you sent over, which is great, and it's kind of like amazing because people are actually like able to see it and. They get to hear a comment on it too you know it's like they get to see a really cool piece and they get a really good like little fun tidbit a little explanation of how it was made like how did it came yeah. to existence it's awesome well you know you're giving me this whole new idea um because i belong to a collective vision gallery up the street which is really cool to have an art walk in this community for sure but you know that's one of the things is sort of how do we how do we promote, you know, the gallery and ourselves and like, you know, honestly, having people like you out there to do podcasts with other artists. I mean, that's sort of a whole other realm that you could maybe, you know, if you wanted to go down that route path into. Um, yeah. That's great. Yeah. So I just, I, I wasn't, it was great because I wasn't really intending to talk much about my art. We were just going to like let it flow, but I'm really glad you brought up those images because I finally got to tell someone about what they were made from and, and why I made what I did. So this is the thing too. And this is kind of my pitch is podcast is great because you can be on social media from today until tomorrow and you can't, no, you, know, you can't like really like, do this. I mean, like, I don't, yeah. most people don't have YouTube channels. So like for to have somebody that can allow you to have like literally an hour of you yeah. explaining your art and your craft and what you do on, um, it's amazing because like, it also like, it also adds to the extra experience of how social media has benefited artists so much in the past 27 years. It is yeah. insane. Definitely. And, but you add the humanity behind it, though. like having I a pod, like podcast, that's like, this is human. This is human to human, you know? And um, so, I mean, you just add a whole other, you were talking about, well, you know, I, I, you love the textures because the AI couldn't replicate that, you know, it can't replicate that. Well, I would have to say the same to you is that, social media and just posts and videos cannot replicate someone like yourself spending, you know, an hour to promote virtual community. Yeah. Because the idea is, is that, um, and I've said this before, you know, if you want to look at somebody that's inspirational, for like example, Andy Warhol, he believed in what's called an artist circle. Um, you know, an idea, idea of his early project would be like the factory is mm. you create a social network of where artists are able to communicate and collaborate their work. Because the thing is, no offense, the industry is not here to save anybody. They're not here to benefit you in any shape or form. They're here to make money. So yeah. if you're here to make money, it's great. I would love to make money. That's be very nice. But, <laughs> but at the same time, it's also being able to realize that a social network is key because how else are we supposed to communicate? We can't yeah. communicate any other way. Yeah. I mean, we can't do cave paintings anymore. I mean, we no. have graffiti though. Yeah. But, and graffiti is pretty cool. I love graffiti. But yeah. How are we going to really, you know, form those visions? Connections. 
because again, like society changes and, and that's the thing is you can fight it. You know, there are people like, oh, I, I don't touch computers. Good for you. But I'm just letting you know that it's a very beneficial tool if you use it in the right way. You know, being able to accept the world that we live in is not saying like you're OK with all the problems. You're saying that you're accepting and being able to be. Let's be honest, it makes things easier. <laughs> it makes things easier. It really does. Well, I mean, look at it. You're in Florida and I'm in Washington State right now. I mean, think about your business, for example. Like, if you, you have the internet and how much is this helping your business? Are you, you're able to communicate and get jobs. And Oh, yeah. 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 I have a couple Instagram, you know, jobs right now that they found out about through through there you know for plastering and and you you're yeah. probably you're probably old enough to remember a time where you you couldn't like send somebody a facebook message you had to physically oh, god. call up Thank god <laughs> remember that you remember you had to physically call someone to actually schedule appointments and if they didn't answer the phone you have to leave a voicemail oh, and wait until they called you back yeah. Uh, yeah, and remember what we were talking about earlier? I think we were, we were talking about it when we are pre-record mode, but man, Arlington 1987, if there would have been social media back then, I would have gotten ripped apart. And so many other people would have played. I oh am God. so glad. Oh. Oh. With a jello pudding flop? Imagine if you had a jello pudding flop. Oh, shit. Post. And how your reputation would have just been. <laughs> now! <laughs> Shout out to Jello Jello Pudding. Uh, pudding Flop. Flop? Flap? Flop? Uh, flop. Yeah. But um, I'm that break. Oh my God. Well, this is this has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate you oh, coming uh, on uh, and uh, uh, having having this. And, um, can you uh like uh, any socials like anybody can um find you in line best way to they want to yeah. reach out so i've got two uh i've got two alter egos here earth Oof. house studio mm -hmm. is my my professional plastering instagram page and i'm also on facebook as earth house and then this might have to be on a future podcast but uh, I also have an Instagram called Pencils the Clown. And that's where you'll sort of find the B-sides to my creativity, which those are a little bit more interesting and sort of B-side than Earth House Studio. But I always make sure everything's, you know, fun, a little sinister, and but tasteful. Always tasteful. <laughs> we always have to keep things tasteful. and. Yeah. And if you appreciate the show, be sure to uh, yeah. leave a like, subscribe and follow and be sure to check out our host. Um, this has been incredible. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, we'll catch you on the next episode. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.